Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's regularly, well, it's a special, it's not special, a, it's a special, special specially scheduled, specially scheduled meeting of the uh, select board, town of Sunderland. It's uh, March twenty eighth. It's um, our agenda is pretty easy. We're discussing discussion regarding FY twenty budget, and we're going to do a, a review of the draft annual town meeting warrant. Um, if we have time to do that, thank you for putting that on, Sherry, on the agenda. That's good. We like to get get that set. Mm. Um, so our our goal, just so everyone knows, I think um, we our office have been in contact with the superintendent, Doug, and I think the school committee is meeting tonight also, right? Yes. So uh, six minutes, right? <laughs> the the school committee the school committee is meeting right? with the school committee is has a meeting tonight. They're talking with the um, the superintendent. The superintendent probably looked at the budget, and uh, they're going to have a, a discussion about that. And what we had left our last meeting Monday night with was that we were going to go through our request budget and see um, where where we're going to go. So. Um, I don't know if any of you would want to go to the school committee, probably. So I can tell you that, in my opinion, we're not going to vote tonight if there will be an override question or not. We're going to put that on Monday's thing so we can have all the information together. We're going to basically look at tonight's, um, our, our budget, and see what we have what we have available on our budget to go through it. But if someone would like to have a comment before they go to the school committee, I'll, I'll if that's okay with the board, I'll open yeah, it up no. and you guys, if anything wants to be said from the audience first before. But we're, we're going to concentrate on our segment of the budget tonight. Um, but I, if you have anything to say, if you want to say, I'll recognize you, you can say your stuff. Anybody want to talk? Doug, do you want to talk? Um. We know the answer to that question. <laughs> Do I want to talk? Voted <laughs> question. Uh, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I guess uh, would it be good to hear, which I think maybe you'll have even more of after tonight, is what the ultimate scenarios look like, override or no override, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in terms of dollar amounts and you know if there's no override what that means in terms of uh, you know or no override which would be also the same as if there was an override and it fails like what uh, you know what would that look like could, could I miss chair or maybe sure. that's not as, as well as Doug if, no. if, if, if there is a no override if there is an override question and it fails the body meets again right, and, and, and goes through a reduction process. I understand that. So that, that's really important to bear in mind from a process point of view. Yeah, right. if, I should if, have short. Yeah, right. So town meeting vote. That, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Town meeting votes a budget. Yep. If it fails, that's the budget. Right. Got it. Thanks. Um, but town meeting with a budget <coughs> often contingent on the override, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it would be if, if it, an override. It can be. Yeah. It can be. I, I haven't figured. I haven't figured out how to ever. How to put together a couple budgets and have different budgets working yeah. at the you same can time? Present right. two budgets. It, it's, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're required, and the moderator will ensure <laughs> that we will leave budget. We will leave town meeting with a um, balanced budget. Correct. Yeah. The only way. So if we if if we have a budget, if we pass a budget that has more expenditures and revenue, it'll be contingent <laughs> upon an override question. Then if we don't pass, Scott's right. We'll, we'd come back and 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 start that process up. So that's why we usually want to kind of put our best foot forward when we get to town meeting. Yep. <coughs> and so that's just yeah. What I, I know the numbers of. I just don't have a firm handle yet on the total town yeah. numbers yet. And, and that's, that's why you guys are. Working for. And, yeah, that, and that's tonight. why we yeah. that's why we thought tonight was a. Um, it was important for us to meet so that we could go over those numbers, and 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 we we have had a presentation from all our departments about the, the expenditures that they're looking for, um, and now so 
now we have to <coughs> go through there and say it's no different than we all do in our own households and we look at our budget what we can afford and not afford so that's what we're doing now I think okay but um, so Scott and David d mm. did you weren't gonna were you looking to vote on an override question this evening no if we can that's fine waiting until Monday yeah. Yeah, I think it was important. The reason More information is better. Yes, yeah, the, reason, the reason for asking for the meeting tonight was to actually take the town's global budget, look at the original asks from all the departments, see what that gap was, the potential for that gap to be funded, and then we asked the town administrator to drill down on expense requests at the town level as well as working with the school uh, for a reduction in all budgets requests and see what that gap was. That's tonight's exercise. So, so what what does that mean? There, there, when 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 you put up a budget, when you when when we put up a budget, we look at we look at the revenue side and we look at <clears throat> the expense side. One thing is, and one thing that is like on the insurance, on health insurance, we we tried it in the past. We've always budgeted that. We know we we already know what our increase is going to be from from our provider. But then we look at saying, okay, will we have addition, additional people come onto the program? We offer, uh, you know, single programs, family programs, one and two person programs. Is someone changing? Is someone to go from a one program to a family program? So we try to build, we try to build in a little extra into those, into, into that account. So tonight, tonight what we'll do is we'll talk to Sherry, we'll find exactly how much money is built into those and say, what do we feel comfortable with for a number so we can read we can reduce numbers some number or some monies there so that's knowing that we may have to come back later if if we have two families joined and we don't cover it we'd have to come back in the in in the future to pay for that so so for us it's it's kind of like more strategizing on the budget expenses tonight and and the other thing is like there are there is some room in we have what they call local receipts, which are a form of revenue. And out of those local receipts is like, if you all plan to going out buying a new car right Please. now, that would be highly recommended because all your excise tax <laughs> goes true. into our local right. exactly receipts. Right. Well, actually, if you could hold off your purchase until after July 1st, that would be very much <laughs> appreciated. Because yeah, right, right, right. then, then it goes on to next year, so there's money that we can use next year. Um, so we have three year, five year, 10 year rolling averages of how much money that we collect with these local receipts. And so we look at that and we find out what, what we have put down for local receipts in our budget. And we look at the trend lines to see maybe we can bump that up a little bit more or we're, we're, so that's, that's kind of what we're doing tonight. <coughs> Monday night we'll get back and, um, uh, after the, the the school committee will meet tonight, and they'll they'll talk it through, and and I'm I'm sure the superintendent and the principal are going doing the same same type of machinations with their budget, and we'll see where we are at that point. Caitlin, hi, Caitlin Rock. Hey, Caitlin. Um, I I just would like to make a few comments about the override, if um, about the vote for the override. <coughs> understand so that so if the school board comes back or the school committee comes back with a budget and you know it it doesn't fund what needs to be funded <coughs> um, and the majority of the people here have kids in school the majority of the people sitting up there do not <laughs> but have of course and I so know still have some in there. Okay. Right. Important to bear in mind. It is bear. It is important to bear in mind. It's something that my husband and I were speaking about at dinner mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> and so I don't know if your decisions would have been swayed 15 years ago. They weren't. Then they were would be now. And I do understand that you have constituents that voted for you and put you on this board, and you have responsibilities to them. Um, however, there are obviously so many concerned citizens that 
if the school doesn't look like the school that I researched and bought a house in this town for and moved in on purpose here when I was looking, um, I'm not, I'm not going to keep my kids there. And I'm going to choice them out, and it's going to lose more money. Sure. And then all of our property values go down because I have friends, <laughs> I have, you know, um, I have constituents, <laughs> and, I, you know, it's, and this is a town that I have invested in, and I love dearly. Um, I've even got, got, I got family to move in <laughs> since I've been here. It's a good run. I have. I have been on the Board of Health for nine years, eight years. I have, you know, I've invested, and um, I don't want my children to go anywhere but here. And they've been in rec sports since they aged in. <laughs> and we were at the school last night for our tonight, and my sister who enrolled her daughter in the school yet this year, and unfortunately a sixth grader, oh. we mused at how amazing the programs are. And we come from New Jersey. We were raised in private schools for a reason. And we're, I mean, we're here for a reason. And I know all of the parents by sight. And that's what makes the town special. And I think that when deciding whether or not to do the override, it's, it's a vote for a vote. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to leave that up to the people. Now, I know that you have a responsibility to your constituents <laughs> and that even bringing it to a vote might get you some guff at the corner store or someplace else. But I think that it's very important to realize, and I'm not saying you don't, I am just making a statement for the record. Mm -hmm. that there's a lot hinging on, and, and it might not get, if it does go to a vote, it might not get the override. And, but our, our property values, I mean, a school is how a town is judged in many ways. Sure, sure. So my investment of a 30-year mortgage <laughs> and in my school, my children's education, and in my children's peers' education, and I will be really, really sappy and say in our future, is, is in this town. And so if any of your constituents come up to you, send them my way. And I will discuss it with them and debate it with them very level-headed and, and very nicely and let them know where I'm coming from. But you can send them my way, freely. Give them my address, because that's how important this is. And I think that there, this is not due to mismanagement. I know there was an override. I know there was an override last year. But this is due to the loss of very concrete reasons. And so there, there are things being put in place, and there's a new superintendent, and I think that in order to give us a chance, I mean, I just would like, and I know I'm preaching to people who are very mindful and love the town as much as I do for many, many, many more years than I have. And I know I'm a newcomer. But I just wanted, for the record, you to know that there are people here that are very involved and caring and have put a lot of thought into this. Mm -hmm. And we're here, and we're here as resources too. Not an angry mob, but as resources. So please use us, but I would urge that you leave the vote up to the town. Thank you. Yeah. Nathaniel? <coughs> um, bye, Doug. Thank you. Thanks, Doug.
I was sitting in art night, art night myself last night thinking about how every aspect of that experience is on the chopping block for this, this next year. Um, music, art, this is foreign languages, you know, many of the people who make those events, yeah, there are lots of things that are on the chopping block that are going to affect that kind of thing. If we take away what we're talking about taking away for next year without an override, what's left there is no art tonight at all. There's nothing about that that's left. It's, it's just a room full of people at that point. Um, and I think that, that obviously it's nice meeting is important to go through the budget and find where we can try to make little incremental shifts of money to try to make it work. Uh, but at the end of the day, nothing that's going to happen tonight is going to change the fact that without an override, there is not going to be the same school next year that there is this year at, in Sussanian. Um, many of the programs that we count on for the education of our children, for the enrichment of our children, are going to go away. Um, and something that she said is very important, and that is that uh, our town is one of the few in this area that has a population growth that's increasing. We have po positive population growth in this town, and a very large part of that is because of young families moving in with children. Um, our school has positive growth. Our school sees um, you know, more, more kids. And that will dry up without the school being the school that it is. Uh, and we see that in, in towns, um, especially in the western part of the First Franklin District during my campaigning. I've, I've talked to a lot of people talking about towns um, out by you know, Peru and that kind of area that are closing their schools because of lower enrollment. Um, and that was the, the long-term effect of them cutting programs 10 years ago because of budget concerns. Um, and I, I really fear for Sunderland losing the edge we have in this area of maintaining this edge we have because of our, our proximity to UMass um, with young families, with the school system bringing that. Uh, and beyond that, all of the school, all of the town events we, we cherish, the Memorial Day Parade, all these events, uh, if you look at the heart of all of them, there's always kids marching in them, there's always the, the um, Boy Scouts, there's always the, the youth um, sports teams, um, and the school programs, there's the, the um, marching band, there's the, the, the instrumental. Um, these are all the things that make <laughs> these events, that make our town what it is. Um, and all of that starts with our elementary school. So I urge us to, to move forward with the, the um, override, if nothing else, because if we don't, then there is no chance of this being saved. You know, if we, if we fail to override, we fail to override, and that's what it is. But if we don't go for it, then there is no there's no other option. It's just cut, 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 cut. So. I'd like to jump off what you said. I'm a strings teacher for Sunderland, and I teach at all four elementary schools. Um, and I have 189 string students across all four schools total. And um, I started three years ago. And there's such an interest for the families and the, and the children to play instruments. And I'm only one day a week at Sunderland, and then the band teachers one day a week, and there's general music two days a week for the specials for all K through six, pre K through six, right? Um, so going off of what you said, uh, my husband's Max Cheryl, and he's the band director and choir director at Frontier, and he would be here tonight, but he has a musical meeting at Frontier. Um, but coming from us as a team and as me and <coughs> art teaches elementary band and we're the theater programs for the music school or for the frontier music mm -hmm. program um it would be pulling out a third of our population of the foundation and it's not just about teaching them the skills and the education of music education but it's instilling that joy and passion at this young age we can hook them so easily right and once they get in the seventh and eighth grade at Frontier, it's much harder for Max to convince kids to join or to come to, I mean, you know, they do all four town parades, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of commitment for the kids. And they have to be really committed, committed too. And it starts with me and Megan Carr and Sue Matsui um, showing them the success that they feel in art and in music too. <coughs> Also, did any of you come last night? No. So, you saw the turnout. I wish we could have had like a clicker. <laughs> I actually have some photos of Ooh, the turnout. Nice. But it really would pull out the foundation sure. that we provide for Frontier. If, and if there's no also if all the other three schools nice. have their instrumental so programs Thank too. You. Again, it would draw families to do <coughs> Or Wheatley or Conway would pull them to other schools. Um, Amherst has a strings program, they have a band program, but strings specifically 
Longmeadow, Amherst, and us. That's it that I know of. Holyoke and Greenfield, they have a grant program after school. Um, but it's something very special we have. And it's not just to save my job, but uh, it's, it's really special. And we have so many kids involved. So, and our concert's in two weeks if you want to come. Mm -hmm. Friends here, see all 189 kids <laughs> perform on stage. So, and Band Fest is next week, Tuesday night at Frontier, and you can see all four through 12th grade bands play in the gym together. And it's nice. really moving. Great. So, thank you. Tuesday, next week, 7 o'clock. <laughs> Shame, shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> shameless plug. Just so you can see. Shameless plug. <laughs> Or you saw them last night perform, right? And I know you probably don't want to cut music. You don't want to cut art, but I assume. But if the override doesn't happen, it'll sure. be cut. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Rebecca Klaus, and I have a child in kindergarten at the school and Rebecca. a daughter um, in the second grade. And last night at Arts Night, um, my child, my kindergartner is um, on the autism spectrum, and there are many things at school that are difficult for him. And the one part of his school day where he has success every day is, or every week when they have it, is music class. True. Um, and last night, um, he was the one on the stage standing on his toes with the earphones on, playing the drum in the kindergarten when they were, you know, that was the thing that he could do. And that's where he, one of the few areas where he meets with success um, during the school day. And he is representative of many of our children who come to school with many challenges. And the arts programs allow for kids with all different types of abilities and disabilities and needs to participate kind of on equal footing. And um, the other thing that's interesting uh, about our family is that we, I'm a 29 year uh, veteran teacher in the Amherst Public Schools. And we applied for school choice for our daughter when she started kindergarten. And at my school, because, thank you, because I thought maybe that would be nice if she came you know, to school with me. And we were granted school choice. And I looked around at the friends she had made from playing uh, soccer, rec soccer, and friends we'd made at Tritown Beach, and we made the decision to, to stay in Sunderland because it, it's a small town, and we wanted to, our daughter to experience going to school with her neighbors. And um, we, were, we <coughs> loved the size of the school and how small it was compared to the large school where I teach in Amherst. And so we made a really conscious decision, like Caitlin said, to educate our children here. And one of the reasons that we want to do that, now that our son has kind of come along and joined our family, it's, it, and for him, it's, it's the arts program. Um, so I would urge you to allow the, the voters the opportunity to vote for the override um, by putting it, you know, allowing it to occur so that we, we can have that opportunity to go to the polls and um, see how things unfold. Great, thank you. Um, yep. Uh, Rob, um, I have a, a second grader and a pre-K uh, kid in school. Already? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the things that uh, I've gathered from you know attending uh, various meetings so far is that uh, if an override does not happen, uh, there's going to be one kindergarten class next year. Um, it seemed like that was kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, and up to 25 kids could be in the kindergarten class. And so I have a, a kid that's going into kind kindergarten next year. And um, you know, 13 kids seems like a, a busy class to me. Um, and having a, a kindergarten class with 25, it just I just can't imagine how that's manageable for you know a teacher and three three uh, teachers assistants. Um, so I'm definitely concerned about that. I'm also really concerned about the arts program. Um, both of my kids are really love music, um, and I really would like to have them the opportunity, you know, keep the opportunity to, to be able to learn that in, in public school. Um, you know, it'd be a tough decision, I think, for me uh, if the, it came to the point where 
there was going to be a huge kindergarten class like that, um, whether or not I would want to keep my kid in his own room. Um, and it would kill me to pull him out because I love this town and I, I love the school. Um, so I just hope that uh, that you guys, I know, I know that you've had, I'm sure that you've had kids in, in the school. And, um, and just like uh, I think Caitlin said earlier, uh, you know, maybe if your kid was going in the kindergarten, you'd feel differently about it. Um, I, I don't know how you feel about it, honestly, but uh, I would just urge you to let the, the people vote on it. Thank you, Rob. Can I piggyback on that? Uh, sure. I have a son, I'm Amy Rubin Harris, and I have a son in kindergarten and a two year old who eventually will be coming to school here. Um, I can't imagine having to cut the, the youngest kindergarten teacher in our faculty and then try to replace her. You know, we have Russell in Miss Underwood's class, and I don't know how it works, but I assume you cut from the bottom like we do in faculty where I teach in a college. I can't imagine trying to replace someone with her expertise and she's working on her master's. You know, that to me is crazy. And so um, you're not going to replace that easily, except, you know, again, starting from scratch. And that's not ideal, to say the least. Um, and I'm, I'm really, really upset that we have to even come to the point where we're cutting Spanish in 2019, where that is one of the most prevalent languages spoken to have our kids actually finally be exposed to that in seventh grade is not ideal. And so I know that's already off the market, but we cannot cut arts. We are basically setting our children up to fail. And how do we do that in good conscience? So um, we need to take this to the override and then we need to force our, our rest of our town mates to stand with us so that our kids have a fair go. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm in fifth grade and I'm in sixth grade next year. And um, band and strings and music and stuff is all like my favorite activities in school. And uh, it would just suck to have that cut. So I just wanted to not cut that. Because that would suck. Thank you. Thank you, young man. Okay, is there anyone else? <clears throat> now, just, just, just to. Uh, to review what so we're going to go over ours tonight and uh, Caitlin's going to yell at me when I say this but but so, sometimes um, there's a process that you have to go to so that you end up with the right answer and and I would say that you, if the one thing if you take away from here tonight is that uh, what I'm telling you is that what I'm, what I'm asking you is to allow the process to, to take its course. Um, and, and that's probably the most important thing that I can say. We need to do, we need to do our diligence by going through our budget um, and, and, and the school really has to do their part by go reviewing their budget and listening to your input into that and so that when we come together we can make the right decision and i think it's critical that that the process i we don't uh, unfortunately at least scott and i and david over the last nine years we don't know any other way to do it we, we've been doing this for for a long time um and i i believe in the process I, I, I would, <clears throat> there's always, when the first time, when you, when you look at a, um, a price of a new car, there's that sh sticker shock. And then, then you sit down and, and you discuss uh, with your partner about what you can do and what you can't do and, and, and can you make things happen. That's what, that's what we're doing right now. Um, is now we had the sticker shock now now we have to discuss what what is what what is our what are our actual needs and what are the wants and and try to separate the needs and wants and then we talk again and and when we when we've identified our 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 needs and we need to haves that's that's what the budget that's so this is kind of a, the process that we go through i appreciate everyone coming this evening um it's important your voices I mean your voices are heard but 
I'm I'm also appreciative that Chris that you're here tonight um, videotaping it um, so that the residents your, 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 our fellow residents hear what you have to say and see who's here also it's very important so FCAT's been a, a, it has been an important part of Sunderland for a long time right Michael I, I back when Michael was a selectman so um, I just yes. wanted you to know, I, I didn't expect or think you guys were going to vote tonight Okay. on that. Um, and I think that I'm, I'm a kind of I'm a research person, and I think we, we can't do anything unless we know exactly what the numbers are. So, yeah, that's how, that's how we feel. And favorite. I think that, no, I think that um, I just knew that I wasn't going to be here between now and when you guys are going to get together again. <laughs> So I figured what the heck I, it's I was like, going to come. It's like we're here every night, so I, I <laughs> just stop in any night. I figured that. No, so I we're knew here last were, night. and I didn't want you to think that I was, I'm, I'm very sorry that uh, I, I, I didn't want, I, I can be very um, Kay we, Kay or Caitlin, we know that you're not bashful. No, I'm not. No, I'm okay. not. But it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> but, uh, but I want. That's but, a good point, uh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think that just, um, no, I'm, I'm very supportive of, of the, the the budgets um, going back to the table because I think that if you could get together, I think that would be fantastic. We do. I don't see how, but I, I think it'd be wonderful. I I, th I, th I personally think that if you talk to the administration at the school, the conversation that Sherry's having with them, I, I think that if you ask the superintendent, I don't think he has a problem with anything that we've said up to this time. I, I think that That's he, he would, he would I, and I, I'd hate to speak for other people, but I know how I feel. I think it's part of the process. And, 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 cause, and, and we do have, we, we have, the, 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 the board has a, a lot of hats, but one, one hat that we have at this time is, is, is a fiduciary responsibility to the town. And, and and so when we when we sit when we're up on the stage it's it's a it's the the town moderators meeting and and, and if you look and read town meeting time that we run our, our town meetings by and they'll basically say the selectmen are window dressing for that but but we are we have a lot of information so so when when we speak to the the assembly at the town meeting some people are going to think that we've had an opportunity to re review everything and we, we, we're we telling them or we're giving them a, a recommendation. And, and some of you always will say, well, what are the selectmen's recommendation? And 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 we take it seriously. So that's all we're doing. I mean, we, we have and, and, and we have responsibility to bring what we think is a responsible budget to the town. So everything that you said tonight is good. Is good. It's good news. Uh, in the fact that we know that you guys care um, and that there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong with having a conversation like we're having right now so we appreciate that but if you want to go to the school committee meeting yeah I'm, you probably need to go yes thank okay you. I have a quick question Shoot. I'm new to all of this and maybe you all know this already but I just want to know the main reasons why there can't why an override just isn't done in is like it, why is you just don't the only reason <coughs> I know just and this isn't from it's just I assume it's just for a tax increase that you don't want to make resident owners property owners upset by increasing your taxes that's the only reason it so what are the other reasons for not doing an override um we, or is it more complicated? When, when, when we look, I'll, I'll, I, know, I can. I know there's a lot of things, but I don't know if you all know, because I don't know. What are the main, like, can you give the top three or top five reasons why you can't just I, say I don't, turn over? Yeah, I, I could. I, I'll, and, and, and I'll let David and Scott speak to themselves, but, I can, but I, can, I can let you know what my thoughts are. We, we it, it's very important that that we have sustainable budgets and 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 what is that and, and in my in my by law the prop two and a half override by the prop two what they call prop two but two and a half the 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 people in the state voted that we will only increase our our property taxes by two and a half percent every year so when, when we look and I, I thought it was a very interesting comment 
by Ben, Principal Ben, the, the other day, um, when when he said, well, just the increases between um, COLA and STEPS, the Sunderland Elementary School budget increases by $75,000 a year as it stands right now. Now, what does that, what does that mean? It, it means that um, we have, in, of our budget, the Sunderland Elementary is about 40% of that, that budget. And we can, and these are rough numbers only, but our ability to increase our, our revenue only goes up about $200,000 a year. So if you say, so if you say that two hundred thousand, forty percent, you got that eight, you got eighty thousand. So just in new, new growth, basically the the elementary school, not you, you don't have the ability to add a teacher. You don't have so n none of that. So so what we look at is is try to is trying to bring a consistent revenue and, and different find different ways for di revenue and and try to stay within because if 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 one thing um, it takes the wind out of the rest of the town so we, we we're not you know the library had come to get this year about trying to increase some salaries for people well all of a sudden it it we don't have that ability so 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 things so things so we're, we're for me it's it's about trying to make our expense budget consistent and fundable and with with knowing that maybe every eight or nine years or pick a number i can't i don't know exactly what that number is but if you don't have new growth you can you can look through maybe an override to supplement I, i've always thought that's 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 you know, so that's not an override isn't our first choice it's a choice but it's it's down the way Do you know um, the, what's the current tax rate What's 15, that? 1563. Okay. And, 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 and our tax rate as of, was it last year, was like third lowest in the county. Third lowest, third lowest yeah. in the county. Right. So we've, we've done, we've done a, a, a really good job on holding that down because that makes Sunderland an affordable community to live in also for a lot of people. Maybe we've done too good of a job. Well, if our schools can't. Well, we, we don't forget we live. The, the mm -hmm. select board and the finance committee bring bring together a budget. We come up with a budget. Those budgets are not always. So we've asked for overrides for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. That so we we so then we have to go back and cut. Um, right. So because there's the political side of that equation. Which yeah, usually. So, in so I, I that's what. So for for me, it, it's trying to balance trying to balance so the that's needs. The main reason. Yeah, okay. it, it's it's it, and and that's for me. You didn't override even if it passed. You still wouldn't have enough money. It's not sustainable long term. Okay, if I could, Mr. Chair. Scoop job. There's there's also other revenue streams that come into the town. There is reimbursement to the town that goes for education. There's reimbursements to the town that goes for roads. There's reimbursements to the town that goes for pilot monies that are uh, payment in lieu of taxes, usually state or privately owned land. That's not on the tax rate. Until we know those numbers, that's a large factor in the available revenue stream. So you don't always go to the property tax rate as an automatic response. That's an important piece to bear in mind. And in, make in, notes as well. When you find in, in, that information, is that the, 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 the same uh, time every year? Sure. Yeah, we get that information from the Department of Revenue has a website, a fantastic website that anybody can use called the Department of Local, Division of Local Services. It's great. Great what history. Of, but what time of the year do you find that out? Uh, we usually find that out early in, well, well, by, we're, by, we're, law, well by, by law, law July 1st. Yeah. By, law, we're, by law, we're supposed to, the, the governor puts out what they call a, it's complicated. You put out house, house <laughs> one. House one. Ha, house one is supposed to usually come out the third, the third week of January. Correct. So you already know for your. Well, no, we, we only know the governor's estimate. We don't know the house's estimate. No, they, we don't know the, the senator. So the, gov, the governor July has. One wasn't for this fiscal year? Yeah, see, the governor has yeah, his, the, the, the governor has his, has, has his ideas. Then the, the state legislators, the House and the Senate have different. So then the, the House comes out with a budget which is called House Two, mm -hmm. and then the Senate has a thing that comes out. Then and then then the governor and the legislators argue about it, 
and it some it comes out someplace hopefully in the past. But it was a very interesting thing that you talked about er, that that we you've talked about the group talked about earlier about Sunderland having actually more children going to elementary schools, which is one of the only one of the only schools in Franklin County that's actually increasing the population. Yes. Well, would you would you want to guess at how much more per child? Um, we're getting this year than last year for for per child from the state, state aid. for state aid like five dollars a child. Do you know how many families that go to Sunderland own property in Sunderland versus rent? No, I, that's that's from a property a from a property that. taxes perspective, that's not germane because yeah. the property oh, okay. the, the property is the property. The, a part, oh, the value of the, the property. value of the property okay. is exactly right. If yeah. I if I could answer, Mr. Chair, back sure. to the, the revenue stream. By July 1st, usually, we know the budget year revenues for the year you're budgeting. So we'll know by July 1st this year for the 2020 budget. So we're working, we, we, it's, it's really weird. We work like, it's not really weird. So A, it's July, and, and then B, it's a year ahead, and we begin forecasting in September. Those numbers begin to gel in January through May, but it's not uncommon to have late June for the actual numbers. And the town has to have the ability to adjust inside of the year that it appropriates. Along the, lines, along the line of questioning, Massachusetts is one of the only, only states in the country that operates in a, in a cash accounting, so that if we don't have money to cover what we appropriate, you simply can't borrow for it sure. so that's but, but I, go, I go to other, lots of other places in the, in, the com, in, the, in the country and they're like you do what that's insane well sorry that's what we do but that's why we're very careful about the when, revenue when, stream. When, we, when we budget with our revenue streams or our locals because we're we have to look at and say what are the you know what does the politics look like you know what what is the governor saying what is the the state house, you know, in the state reps or the state senators, right. and and right now we is a lot of conversation that goes on back and forth. But thank Great you questions. for the question because yeah. a lot of people have never asked that question. And this year, actually, it'll be a federal impact because of the start reduction. You know, you you, you can't yeah. deduct your local and state property taxes this year right. on your income. Everybody's going to see a big. So you're you're we, we will see that. That through, tax cut that you through got the car you're not going to buy. Yeah. Nathaniel. Um, sorry. What it sounds like to me I, is that if nothing bad happens in town in terms of the school city budget, that every year we can barely cover the cost of the increasing cost of just doing business as usual with the 2.5% two, two in the override that we already have percent we can get. So if, if no override passes on, on a given year, best case scenario, we're treading water or we're not gaining any ground, but we're not losing any ground in terms of our, our school budget. It feels like to me that if we have the lowest, one of the lowest property tax rates in the area, we have a perpetual underfunding of the school because of this inability to compensate for the increases that if we put off override this year we're only going to be in a worse position next year to try to catch up and that means a bigger override next time a less of a chance of passing that override next time um, if anything it makes more sense to do more and bigger overrides earlier than later to Is get it just exponentially compound then it, it, because not only the will, will expand yeah not only will next year, if we want to bring back music and art, not only will it cost us as much to fund that next year as it would if we passed override this year or not, mm -hmm. but we also now have lower, um, as we discussed, we have less people trying to move into town, potentially lower revenue streams from the impact of not passing the override. Whereas if we pass an override to this year, maybe we pass an override for the next five years straight mm -hmm. in order to get that, get, get the budget into the place where it has the ability to, to, to function. Um, I worry that we're going to get to a position where we, if we don't pass the override, it becomes a matter of no longer being within the state's, the state's re 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 requirements, um, and that that override becomes such a large number that we can't pass it. Sure. So if I could, Mr. Chair, with respect to an override, uh, we're, we're talking, this room is populated by people in support of $2.7 million of our $8, $8 million budget, right? That's really important to bear in mind. Secondly. Last year, when an override of $200,000 was passed, if the school's expenses stayed in the historic three-year average trend, we would not be having this discussion. The school's expenses actually 
increased only by that 2.8%, the real expenses. The shift in the cost right now is specific to a revenue stream that is school choice and the way it was accounted for. That's really important to bear in mind. This is a cost shift to the town. Last year, the override that passed, if we stayed in the three-year trend without a cost shift of school choice to the town, we would not be having this discussion. We would have an equal budget. So that's sort of the point. Is but the how point, close? The point is that we live in a world where we're never going to have 10 years in a row where we're in our three-year budget projections. We're always going to have a year popping up that's, here and there where this is going to happen. It's going it's to happen. That's not what our 10-year average shows. Yeah. What do you say, Kate? So we're never going to have growth, though. See? That's the point. We, we have had growth. If you look at the expense budget across uh, without going... You want to hear the tape? David, 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 David has some numbers. I can pass this on. The school is okay. actually, this means has been 2.5% over the last decade. Yeah. I, Again, I, we're, having, we're, have, we're having a revenue shift discussion, not a cost of education discussion. There is a, there's a $200 plus $1,000 cost shift away from choice to the town. Right, not, that not means a two hundred and fifty school choice people are the the money did not follow no longer followed those children into our school, correct? Sort of. There's some program so and sped offset and, and and you know you you know this the backstory. Okay, a little and, bit. And yeah. we actually and we actually applaud the cost shift to the uh, recurring revenue stream in a single year for the totality of that cost isn't something the town's in a position to absorb without an override. If this was Two years, which maybe we'll talk about when we get past this part of the discussion, maybe that's affordable. But we can't force those students back into the school. I understand. So it's not like the school <coughs> did something. I'm not assigning any blame. Right, right. right. This, yeah, so just dealing with the this effect isn't of it. something in the control. Um, H how is this in? That's, that's more a school committee question. So you're saying that those expenses should have been anticipated. <coughs> That's more a school committee question. Well, but but you were. Can, can can I can I tell you how I feel? Well, um, well, just for I guess. And 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 the, the and, and 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 this is kind of where some of the discussion, the points are going, with with, with the administration. Mike, who, who talked? You all talk passionately about having arts in the school. Now, for me, um, I've I've a, oh, a I, I believe school choice is a failed experiment. Okay, I, I think having school choice, a it takes it takes uh, children with parents that are probably the most active, and they sh they take them out of the home districts and they bring them into other districts, which is great for the town of Sunderland, but it sucks if you're another community. I'm sorry, I use a language, but it, it's terrible if you're out of the community that lose those people. Because you think about it, those parents are willing to take their children every day, put them in the car early, get them get them to a school, pick them up, and take them home. Those are dedicated. Those are dedicated parents that are no longer in a district. Philosophically, I think school choice is bad. Mm -hmm. The second reason I think school choice is bad is because now we and I said this a million times is that we assign dollar values to students instead of looking at children we look at dollar signs what we're doing right now okay that's bad we should be educating students not dollar signs my third point and I've said that and it goes back to December 17th 2006 it's amazing I can remember that, but there's a reason why. And, and at, at that point, I had said, and I strongly believe, that school choice should not be used to offset reoccurring expenses because we don't know what's going to happen next year with school choice. We have no idea. These are school choice is not controlled by me. Those are my own personal thing. I've always said. Okay, and we said it, we said it back, and I, I'm going to feel old now, but when, when Frontier, Frontier is kind of one of the shining jewels in, in Franklin County, for an L, and actually in Western Mass. One of the things that Bo Boards of Selectmen said back in the early 2000s, we were losing children to the PVPA, like you would not believe. 
They were going to the PVPA for strings. For And we Not said, either. boards of selectmen at the time said, wait a second, Frontier. What would it cost you to add a, um, a theater instructor? What would it add to add? And, and we advocated, and I've advocated for forever, that school choice should be augmenting our education. It shouldn't be paying, it shouldn't, in my opinion, it shouldn't be paying the, the uh, reoccurring teachers. Our kindergarten teachers should come out of the town budget. And, and that's, that's what we're saying. So, so we, we fundamentally, and, and, and this, is a, this is a part I love about the discussion, we are arguing from different points, but we're same, like, same. if the line same does point. come around, because we're, we're, this, we're this close or this far apart, we're not. I, I just, and, and I think that's a discussion the school committee is having right now, and, and it's important. And, and, and Scott's point was, is, was good before also. It's not about, you don't necessarily have to keep increasing exponentially every year. You can live within a budget, and when extraordinary things come about, when, and, and this may be an extraordinary year, you have to address those. And that's what we're trying to do. I think, though, and we talked about this the last meeting about how originally the school of choice was supposed to be you had an entire year's amount of money set aside for it, and then you know you're funding a year in arrears, where then over time it got chewed away to the point where we're now sure. funding a year. That's sort of why I'm saying we need this override, is because if we, yes, maybe this is an extraordinary year, and maybe our expenses, maybe our income streams are off this year. So maybe if we pass the override this year, next year we have a little bit more room in our budget. Great. That means we can get a little bit left behind on school choice. Because if this year we were a year in arrears for school choice, we would not be having this discussion today. We would have the leeway in our budget to be able to say, okay, well, we can adjust it this year, and then next year when the things swing back around, we're fine. <coughs> if, we, if we do push for an override, raise our taxes a little bit, still one of the lowest in, in the area, we then have that leeway where after this extraordinary year goes by, now we're talking about, great, now we can have our school choice be funded nine months instead of so, so, so Nathaniel, there. I don't disagree with you, but I have a question for you. <coughs> what policy is there in the school in the schools that is going to make that happen? Do, do, is there a policy in the school in the school that's going to make that happen? What you're just talking about now? You mean you, that? Yeah, that just, just what? Just what you were saying? That school, <coughs> is there a policy? That would make that happen. Just that they come to you just to approve their budget the same way we're doing this year. And if they come next year and say, since we have all this extra money, we want to go and we want to start adding extra things we don't have, that's when we start having this conversation about no. We, we, that's when we have the conversation about how we're going to be conservative with our money is when we have extra, not when we're coming here saying we don't I have enough to do basics. I think okay. right now, I think right now we're 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 looking at more of a. I I think for me at least is I I'd like to see a a policy a form. I don't know what you call it, about how school choice money is used and, and, and where it's used and how it's used and stick, stick to that policy. I, I, I think there, there's, fun, there's fundamental things that we're talking about. Um, there, there's, fundamental, there, there's fundamental ways to look at a budget and the payment of, of different things that we're, that we're looking at. And I think that's, we're, we're, just, we're kind of like discussing two different Dynamics right now. We're, 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 I'm not, no one's saying that anything was done wrong in the way the school's budgeted or the, their, their budget is bad. We're, we're, we're just talking, for us, it's talking more, and, and, and I think what Scott was saying, well, maybe, maybe this year we don't, instead of taking that, that shifting of the entire 200000 maybe maybe it can only shift $100,000. You know, so so I, I think it's more it's more of a it's it's that kind of a discussion versus a, a blame discussion. Caitlin. But Tom, here's my problem. Shoot. I I don't want to take your bargaining chip away. I understand that. But I don't want you to play chicken with my kids' education. See, you have the ultimate bargain chip. Okay. You say, look, I am not going to vote to put an override on the ballot unless you write up a policy of how you're going to better budget mm. your money. That's fair. And that is the, the, I un, and that's a that is absolutely good fiscal oversight. Mm -hmm. 
But if for some reason they can't get their crap together to do it, this is my children's school. Absolutely. Yes, I can vote to get them out and I will volunteer for the committee myself or whatever, but I am not willing to hurt. And then it, he's absolutely right. It's gun. The hole is going to get deeper and wider. And then we're going to come back and need 400,000. Yeah. And then because we're going to have to rehire teachers back from and, and instead of an cost of living when you hire a new person they want fifteen thousand dollars more sure you never hire a great you never hire person. someone at the so it so do you know what i'm like the, the, the rehiring you're, and you're, so <laughs> in so many ways you're preaching to the choir if i, I could. know i know this <laughs> but I've sat and in I'm that up, same seat and made the I, same I, argument I, 10 years ago I, you know and so and yes then. maybe i should not be here and i should be running for school committee <laughs> I just don't have the time. <laughs> but oh, I, I, do you know what I mean? I, I, but the, so I'm not willing, and I, I, you're in an, an excellent position right now. But I just am asking to you to tread lightly. I guess. So if if we if if there was a possibility of uh, having a budget that passed this year without dipping too deeply into the town's reserves and stayed within the constraints of two and a half, knowing that we passed an override last year, right? And the school, uh, the elementary school, uh, didn't ask for a 14% increase and asked for an 8% increase and made some, made some changes to the elementary school. How is that not part of the same discussion? As long as they're meeting that, that's what actually what we're, requirements. That, that's what we're actually here to talk about tonight is the budget piece and the Sun Elementary School and the administration are talking about the administering and managing of the elementary school. But you haven't gotten their numbers yet, so how, you you don't I mean you don't have anything to work with. Well, I think we have a range. Where your analogy fails is that you know the school can't get by on eight percent is really the bottom line. Is I think we looked at the numbers and everyone has seen what was going to happen if we pass an eight percent increase. The, the the what's on the chopping block it's like saying like you know. Telling an insulin, a diabetic, like, we'll just take a little less insulin and it'll be okay. Well, that's okay sure. if that works for them. Sure. But if they're, if they've actually like, killed them, then that's gonna kill them. That's the bottom line. I mean, we are a place where, like, I don't think, and this is my opinion, and it's based on what I've looked at the numbers. I don't think that we have a choice of not going to override without the the cut being so drastic that nobody in this room is gonna be happy. With that's fair. So, we're up. That's fair. Do you want to add something? Um, oh, I've been thinking about a lot of things through the discussion, and. Um, and I, I want to say, I, I've been going to a lot of meetings. I appreciate all the extra explanation because even as a regular, I'm still confused about some of these issues. <laughs> you got to be in our shoes. This is what we yeah. barely do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, but I wanted to, I feel like all the discussion about the school choice money and it not it being used for things that maybe it shouldn't have been used for and how you need to make some changes, I feel like this is the perfect time to talk to the school committee and say, we're not happy about this. How can we work together to make sure this doesn't happen again? That's what I say in my house when anyone tries to blame anyone. I say, no, it's not about blame. It's about what are we going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I think we can all be upset about it, but we really need to look at it constructively and say, what are we going to do about the situation right now? And then what are we going to do to keep this better protected in the future? I also want to point out when I was at one of the meetings when school committee members were here, they mentioned some of the reasons why they had to rely on school choice, and my, it was my understanding that some of it was in part by trying to keep to a really, really tight budget for the school as a whole. And I think they also mentioned um, a loss of, like there were sometimes sudden losses of state support through during the school year, so then they had to resort to using school choice money to pay some of the bills. And there are also things like if a student who's a second language learner starts in the middle of the year and needs a tutor, um, you know, a, a translator tutor, right then, they, they're required to uh, supply that by law. So there's an unforce, or, um, you know, unpredictable costs that come up throughout the year. There are. I mean, get, you, we can sit here and plan as well as possible, and there are. And if you get a student that moves to town that has an extraordinary amount of special education costs, that's yeah. not, not, we yeah. can't predict that. Right? Uh, I also wanted to say I've been in touch with Joe Comerford's staff a 
about the situation in Sunderland, and so I wanted to make sure our state representatives are well aware of what's going on. They've responded well, that, back. I've been in contact pretty much every day with, um, he's asked for specific information about Sunderland itself, and um, I know that the state is looking at trying to change the formula, but I think special education needs to be looked at harder with the proposed legislation, because I don't think Sunderland has 21% um, of the students need special or have special needs requirements just in the resident just of the, the, the percentage population. of the resident population right in school choice it's down to like 19.5 percent right. I mean if it takes us the, the happy little town of Sunderland to you know be a, a textbook illustration for the problems and state funding mm -hmm. for schools great mm -hmm. you know I mean if we can I have one one more point I, I'm, I know that we have a low tax rate and no one wants to see taxes go up. But it's also my understanding that you know we have one of the lowest rates in the county, and if you look at the other city or towns that have lower tax rates than us, there are towns like Roe, which I believe has a nuclear power plant. It and used to. Yeah. Or used to. Well, <laughs> you, you know, they have they basically water power. basically Roe Ro and Irving they have yeah, they have hydro Irving storage had stations. Yeah, they cheaper mills. So like yep. those towns were better positioned to get away with and have that lower rate. Ir Irving Sunderland Irving actually has a Northfield. Northfield yeah, Mountain power. actually is in Irving. Yeah, yeah the power. That's where. That's where. They, yeah, that's where they get their that's money. Yeah, they. Yeah, that's where they get their money from. Police cruisers every year. Right, and that, that's one of the things demographically you have to look at is we do not have. Exactly. We are pretty much a residential base We're not in terms of exactly. So, the yeah. burden falls on all of us. We can get a Walmart. Mm, we could, <laughs> if if I could okay. respond. So to, to, your, to, to your point about uh, an opportunity for collaborating <coughs> with the administration of the school committee, mm -hmm. th this is the year and, and that is in process. Mm -hmm. I hope to see that. It is. Hey, it, and, and again, I, 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 and someone said it earlier, we have a new superintendent. Um, we have a business manager that now Totally independent, um, yeah, that's a good and point. that 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 changes a that changes a lot of things also. And there's a lot of discussions that are going on right now. So those are those are good things. I was with the um, superintendent two out for two hours before I yeah. came in here. So, excuse me. Okay. Anybody want to talk about highway, <laughs> police? Okay. I'm gonna pass. Take this and pass this around. <laughs> this is not a pothole meeting. <laughs> and, and again, I, I just want to. And again, I want to. I'll explain. I just want to thank you. We're, we're going to move on if it's okay. We're going to move on to our uh, our discussion on the budget. But we, I like to thank you all for uh, coming and and I and I also Kate, Caitlin specifically to you. I think I, what I would do is I'd go back and look at the history of the board and see what the board has done. Okay. The I, I'm just saying, which just board? just huh? Which what your board? Yeah. The select board. Yeah. Just I, I would I would just look at the past history. Okay. I would if, if I if I could respond to one comment. I don't have constituents. I have one town. Okay. Whether it's a corner store, the elementary school, or both of my sons through <laughs> the strings and drama program. I have one town. I don't have anybody who knocks on my door and says, you got to keep my taxes down. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sherry, let's. D3. We, we went right through one camera operator right up to another one. You wore Chris out. Hey. I know. Nice. Okay. Sherry, uh, looks like you. Uh, Put a couple changes in here. Yeah, you want me to give you just kind of a quick. All right. You may want to wait a minute because we're yeah. not going to be able to hear each other. Right. One more minute. Yeah. Thanks, I've got. Excuse me, if you guys could just yep. kind of discuss out there. Sorry. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yep, you too. Thanks for coming. If you want to talk about that afterwards, okay. if you're still sure. around. Okay, so the revised budget before you um, is a budget that includes a 2% COLA for non-union, non-contracted employees. For the most part, um, all of the expense lines are level funded. Uh, you will note increases as follows in the um, contracted hours for the accountant. There's an increase in hours there for four hours still, so um, that number is the same. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I did not decrease that. So, Sherry, have, have we looked at um, different services? Yeah. Accounting account. services? Yeah. Yes. Um, my concern with that um, this year is that the treasurer collector is leaving and we have a new one coming on um, with we'll not the, the same, same amount of experience. Um, yep. So I think it's important to have that kind of stability and historical knowledge. Um, the, we have talked about ways to make um, things a little bit easier. Uh, the hours were never restored for that position from, yeah, from right. way back when. Mm -hmm. Um, so we thought uh, perhaps increasing the hours okay. uh, would help relieve some of the tension on his end. And the COG is doing some restructuring as well. Um, so I believe he's only going to have two towns now, Sunderland being one. So that should help. Okay. Uh, kind to of stress level a little bit. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Sherry. Um, and uh, so you'll see a decrease in the tax collector salary, which... Um, is due to the new hire, not um, starting at what Susan uh, left at. Mm -hmm. uh, When's I, Susan's last day, by the way? May 6th. <coughs> so we're... Oh, uh, oh she's staying she oh, she stay to May then. Thank yeah, you, Susan. May 6th, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, she's Thank been you, wonderful. Okay. Um, so I um, also took and added some money to the pay payroll assistant line. Um, so that she can provide some assistance uh, to the new collector treasurer um, with that additional sh hours. That shows up in account and expense? It shows up in the tax collector treasurer line down below. So, oh, so sorry. Are, are, everything are, are, else is yeah, pretty yeah. much Everybody, leveled, like I said. Yep. Yep. So, so are, now, so are, are, you trying, are you using the payroll clerk and the treasurer? Are they kind of like, are you using those as offsets? Yeah, they're offsets. Mm -hmm. There's still so some you're in increased the there. payroll clerk in by four thousand dollars. Okay, and and, and and at the same time, okay. Um, and again, that's just to accommodate the new hires and help with that transition. There's a lot to um, yeah. Learn. Understood. The town clerk, there's nothing there. I made reductions in um, commission expenses in the. Um, Planning board lines. Oh, that's a payroll. Sorry. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah, little it. small ones. Um, I'm looking at the building expenses to see if there might be some additional uh, reductions that I can make there. I reduced the energy contingency line and the uh, municipal buildings energy lines to reflect savings that we are seeing in the um, solar project and the net metering credits and the addition of the new LED street lights. So you, you are, Sherry, if I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Do you think we're beginning to see the manifestation of the investment from either green communities as well as the retrofit work, not just the solar field. Mm -hmm. there's, there's been hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. that have been spent on buildings. At some point, although your BTU costs rise, at some point you'd expect those energy numbers to drop off. That's that's the goal of spending money on that kind of building envelope work at the public safety complex, right. building envelope work and needs work at the libraries, building envelope work, window inserts on this space. You'd expect that you'd over a couple of years begin to see, again, you've got price point versus BTU hours. At some point, they should equal out. Are you comfortable with that minus seven thousand dollars between the two? I am. Okay. Okay. Um, and I say that not as a setup. I say that as part of an education <laughs> yeah. piece because people go, "Oh, great, green communities. We did really, really well." No, we're well, watching you're supposed to that. save money in the end, yeah. right? Well, that's the thing is you may. It depends on energy costs because you well, yeah. say not, your unit costs, right? Right, because you could, you know, I'm using less terms. fuel, exactly but that right. fuel is going up. So right. going up. and you can't do anything about that in, in that respect. And then there lies the trick with the PV system. That's where the credits run right through and yeah. the offset runs right through. Yeah. When we get to the end of that debt schedule, we should be at or near zero for electricity. That was the goal. That was the design. Right after the... Someday. Yeah. Someday. Someday. Yep. Good Good get, out, but uh, 12, 12 more years to go. 12, yeah. Yep. So there's a $7,000 reduction or so in the okay. town buildings line. Um, for the police department, uh, the chief had requested an additional officer. 
Um, and so I backed that out. Um, so I see the backing out of 29.3. Right. Under it was a full time. Right. There was an ask of 45. It was an ask of 45, but um, some of that is additional um, hours due to the um, union negotiations. Okay. Um, and did we see contract. a subsequent reduction in part time? Uh, part time. Mm -hmm. Part time is essentially flat at $2,000. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then again, uh, there's the 2% increase mm -hmm. for non union, non contracted in there. Uh, fire department, there was a very slight um, increase, and that is in the South County EMS line. Mm -hmm. uh, in the wages, the 2% um, COLA increase. Now, we're having a transfer at the end of the year for, because we have a, essentially a call service paid mm -hmm. for by call. We've had a request for, is it 12000 now in front of us? End of year transfer for wages? Does this reflect an increase? I see $277, and are we setting ourselves up for under part-time firefighter uh, next year request based on call, uh, transfer based on call volume? So this only ref reflects the 2% COLA it. increase in the wages. Got it. For anyone so that's non-union, non-contracted. So we should ask, if I could, Mr. Chair, we should ask the chief about that, that call. I know call volume is a wild card, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Could be zero, could be a million. You never really know what the heck it is. Maybe we just follow through with this year going forward with the COLA Sherry's prescribing and then get to end of your transfers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Under the town inspector's building inspector line, that um, reflects the 2% COLA increase. We mm -hmm. did adjust the alternate hours up a little bit um, for additional work associated with the Sugarbush project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, Joe's retiring April 1st, so yep. we'll have a new um, building inspector and a new alternate. When is he retiring? I'm sorry. April, April 1st. 1st. This Monday. Yeah. Monday. Yep. So the alternates um, going to be handling things until we have a new commissioner. Um, and those, the applications close on April first. We have two so far. So. Okay. Um, let's see what else do we have? Animal control and other protection line. There's just a five hundred dollar increase there, and that was for the Franklin County Sheriff's Department. Uh, Contract. The housing unit. Housing, housing the dogs, dogs yeah. Um, highway, that's level funded with the exception of the 2% increases to um, employees under the labor wages. It looks like 5.6, and that's because there are two laborers okay. in that category. Um, health and sanitation, there was a slight increase in the uh, solid waste district assessment. And in the landfill monitoring contract, so um, that's up three hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Okay. Library um, re reflects the two percent increase in wages, and I've level funded the expenses in that line. Elementary schools, I heard a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar wage, uh, not wage, increase in their total budget line. So I put that in. Mm -hmm. um, so they're up 9.9 percent .9 there. If I could, Mr. Chair, that was a conversation I have with the superintendent, and that's a discussion that's being had right now yeah. over at the. So we don't have final numbers. Yeah, it was just something to work number. with. It was yeah. a placeholder. Yep, somewhere in between the right. other. Yep. Um, Franklin, the other schools. There's nothing new um, nope. there. <laughs> and under the benefits and insurance. So I uh, reduced the unemployment line. That's been down for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, you spent about thirty-five hundred dollars. This year, it's about four thousand. See, and that—that's—that's that's the, the other thing that people. There's an indirect. There's a bump there, right there. And yep. and you and when you lay somebody off, yep. There's there's all of a sudden those other costs, mm -hmm. and that's one cost yeah. that can go up right away. Right. Oh, yeah. Which, so which, I did reduce that down. If I could piggyback yeah. on that, Mr. Chair, you know, we, we were talking about uh, the prior discussion about the elementary school operating expenses, and we're in, what is lost in that noise, of course, is the discussion that 
under benefits and insurance, our town medical of 401,103 is vastly populated by staff at the elementary school. Absolutely. And, we, and we, no one has that discussion. We don't have the discussion about un employees' medical, unemployment, workers' comp, county retirement. They're all just called insurance. So there's those, even, even at a school committee meeting, um, it was, it was um, Peter is like, and I'm sure you guys carry, yeah, Peter, you know, it's 1.64. Well, you know, I was thinking. Every, every man hour associated with it, 1.64. I was thinking about it on one of my drives home one night. Like, would it be worth it to at least break can, that out? I can give you those numbers if you like. <laughs> I mean, is there any benefit to that? Just so that we can see it. You know, I think, I as, don't know. If I rec as I recall, we, we carved out, when I was in the finance committee, like 99, 2000, we carved, I know. Remember, remember, <laughs> I hear some chuckling. <laughs> we, we, she was there. So she was there. We, we wanted to carve out insurance so we could look at true cost of operating. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? But in doing that, in doing such a good job of that, it needs to be reminded on occasion, I guess maybe is the most polite way to put it. The other nice polite way to put it is in the, in the, and I'm going a little deeper in the weeds. In the uh, school choice formula, the school calculates choice in, the town is assessed choice out. Right. So, we, and, and again, that's, it's too deep in the weeds right. for a, a passionate discussion. Sense. And it was like, well, if you really wanted to budget for school choice, you'd budget net school choice. Right, right. But anyway, that's something we're, we're working another, on with yeah. respect to the administration. That's a different discussion. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack that. Okay, um, so the ask for uh, fiscal year 20 for employee health insurance was 413,517.89. Included in that was two extra family plans for just in case anyone comes on mid-year at a cost of 24,837.28. We took that out. Um, that makes a total ask of 388,690.41 for um, health insurance for all employees. Of that, the school um, ask is 284,213.58. What was the increase over last year? Uh, the, 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 the plan increase. the plan increases. Right. I believe it was almost flat, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Because yeah, we switched them so, you know, well, there, there was, out. Some people are making it sound like that's gone way up. No. I'm uh, just saying in general. In, oh, in no. The town's in contribution. Right, right. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Right. Ah, that. Well, actually, <laughs> you know, it was. it's interesting you say it. Um, in, in, that, in national politics, who knows? You know, if you could, it's, right. it's all confetti. Who knows what the information is? Part of the discussion prior to making the decision was about what are the average increases two budget cycles ago before we made a plan and would a substantial plan change be needed to hold those costs down? And the answer was no and no. You get you get two years to begin your, your sick SIC average with us and then you're in our pool, which is a considerably larger pool, which has like 3.5% average increases over the last decade. So we made that move knowing Plus, we got the added what benefit of right? being able to cover another 5% yeah. of so yeah. employee costs. Right. Which was nice. Anyway. So we did take out one yeah. family plan from the town okay. health insurance ask. Um, let's see what else do I have? The last one is a senior county assessment? Yeah, the South, uh, South County Senior Center assessment is, is up. Yep. And uh, that's it there for the operating budget. So um, we're up $327,838, which is a little better. Where were we at? We were at 500, was it? So if, if I could, Mr. Chair, that yes. 327838 $77,077 is all of the town side. Mm -hmm. The remainder is the elementary school. So to, to think that we're at, well, regardless, we're working toward funding the elementary school at the ask that the, that the, with the, at the ask of a quarter of a million dollars of increase. 
basically almost nine and basically short of nine percent. Okay. In this budget now. They're talking about it's right. Yeah, treatment plant and debt. Debt's yeah. going down. Treatment plants, you know, funded yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Four thousand dollars. Is the library goes away, or is it next year? Next year. Next year. Right? Next year. Yeah. One more year. One more year. It's a great point. So it's interesting, you know, and I, I go I go back to this this point more more times than than not. And you remember these points, you know. We're talking about carrying only two hundred and forty thousand, two hundred forty four thousand dollars of total debt for the entire town, right now. That's all of it. And 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 it's important to bear in mind sewer relining, yeah. energy, which is a loan, public safety complex. So the only two pieces that are actually on the town. Library principal and interest, public safety principal and interest. The rest is Title V, sewer, which is paid by users, energy, which is paid by reduction. So the total is $244,000. But it'll go up next year because of the fire truck. Correct. Next year we get a fire truck. It's going to go up a big nut. Not a cheap fire truck. No. No. Where's that one? Like Very shiny fire. You <laughs> don't want to buy a fire truck. No. No, you talk Every about year. a racket. There's Guido and Company and Victo and Company. They make fire trucks. You talk to those guys. And if Guido's busy, you talk they to Victo. They know each other. And they know each yeah. other. Sorry. They probably golf together. Sunday, they have Sunday Just dinner. like selling yeah. tobacco. <laughs> yeah. They all know each other. Sorry. So we talked briefly about the current revenue forecast yep. in the budget that Sherry's currently developed. Using our formulas, we have a shortfall to overcome of basically 71.5. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting close. Now, this this isn't, so, <laughs> we the room's empty because we talked long ago about the override. No one's talking about the other $5 million we've got to deal with. That said. It was a very deja vu moment for me. Yeah, I thought so. Mm. You're just on the wrong side of the table. The conversation hasn't changed. Yes, it hasn't. So. so I'll be meeting with um, the assessor and Brian, the accountant, on Monday. We're looking for other revenue sources. We're going to look at the overlay surplus um, and review all the numbers to see. Um, that and local receipts analysis, right? Because yeah. we use a, we use the three-year average, mm -hmm. and that's one where you don't want to. Right, you don't want to borrow. Right. It's like you get too close, and you, you get the it, whole Icarus it. problem, and it's right. not fun. Yeah, that's a dangerous right. game. Right. The other piece that you know we talk about our, our our available free cash and the formula, you know, we generated a significant amount of free cash two budget cycles ago. We were able to assess as to why, where did that come from? Last year or the current year's free cash, we walked out of we went unreserved, undesignated, which is meaning you didn't spend it or you raised it. And that was 633,000. After the charges that come out, when you reconcile that number, we came into this year with 585. Prior to the anomaly, which was 2018, this is 2019, um, prior to that anomaly of a 700,000, which was a counting problem on our part, right? It was just the capital piece wasn't accounted for correctly. It ended up in free cash. That said, we were. 380, 380, 430, 440, and this is a this is two years later, 585. We'll do the cash analysis to see where that 585 came from, and it's important to bear in mind that's always a bit of a moving target. You could have two vets that were paid <coughs> for from two years right. prior. It's it's nothing you want to count on. No, but it is in line with the percentages of our ex operating budget. When you look at our operating budget ticking up to eight million dollars essentially you should be at that five plus percent range no longer are the days of one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars of free cash like in 2000 it doesn't work that yeah, way it should be around right. 50 five hundred thousand correct four to five hundred thousand so just so just so we, we we are prepared for well how did you get five hundred and eighty thousand dollars well actually we probably should right when all said and done you should be in that range we move more toward free cash Moving forward, as part of the formula, we use the free cash formula pretty rigorously for the last four years, five years, with the exception of last year, and we see this kind of like being a, a programmatic, more, more stable, programmatic number. It's like, okay, not that you want to bank on it, but. 
stability is good in budgeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sherry, for that. Appreciate that. That's never any fun. It's the worst part of the year. <laughs> yep. Any questions from the uh, audience? What is their stabilization number? I was just going to say that. 563682. Capital stabilization. We're going into the year with 74112. We have just applied 113141, so capital stabilization will be 190-ish. Stabilization, if we follow the free cash piece, we have a single appropriation out of it. If we follow the free cash formula and we, we apply our 58,000 accordingly, we should leave the year, minus the warrant, with about 550 in stabilization. Our total reserves will be about 7.3 percent. Peg access now we account as a flow through. You're going to see that as a budget item, yeah. and that that comes in and then has to go through. We have to appropriate it. You, before it was by contract. We have to appropriate it. Yep. More lines in the budget. Yeah, another line in the budget with another piece of revenue on the revenue side. The 71,002 will be coming back under the stabilization because that's a we appropriated grant. it for the grant but it's a yep. hundred percent right. reimbursable as soon as that's I true. send right. the bills in we'll move so it Michael, yeah. Yeah. At, the, at the time of reimbursement have you we have to move into, it back uh, to stabilization yeah. Yeah. Mm. wood chips and uh, wood pellets the uh, wood pellets for heating yeah have you been taking like kind of like the SRX but it's called apes the, uh, have you been taking We don't advantage? get those as a farmer, though, right? What's that? The apes. Have apes. you been able to take advantage of those yet? Peas. No. I, you know, I get some information for you. Okay. Because I, I talked to Sherry today yeah, about it. Yeah, um, With the renewable resources, Massachusetts is trying to uh, use biofuels for... Right. And... Um, there's some pretty attractive programs out there right now, so we're looking at the elementary, uh, the elementary the school, boiler, right? You had to dust off an old project. Yep. I think so, and, and and it may not have been affordable before, but right now it looks like they'll pay for fifty percent. Although I saw some argument being raised about biomass. Using, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What so constitutes renewable? Probably a little dust that needs to settle on. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I, if I could yep. talk briefly about the things to include in the warrant so that we can move that piece Mike forward. Yep, that's where we're going. Okay. Right here. Okay, Article 1. To hear the reports of the selectmen and the other boards. Uh, move to include. Second. So we're, we're going to do... You want to recommend? Yeah, I would say yeah. things we can do, both yeah. include and recommend. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's, do, let's both. do it all. Yeah. You're doing both? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So move to recommend Article 1 as well? Second. A okay, motion to uh, include and recommend Article 1. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We want to pass over to? Uh, move to include two. We're going to have the, sal we're gonna have yeah, the right. names, yep. but we may not have the values. But move yep. to include. Yep, second. Motion made and seconded to include Article 2. All those in favor mm -hmm. signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Article Three. Oh, we need to include the budget, so I'll move to include the budget <laughs> article. <laughs> right. Okay. We have motion made. Second. It is seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying say aye. 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 Three zero. Uh, article Four. Four is the formula, so I would move to include. include and yeah. if we find we don't have the revenues, we can pass over or not recommend. Yep. Right. Second. Our article 4, I have a motion made and seconded, which is uh, the formula for the use of free cash. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 3 0. Article 5. Move to include on that one for the same. Motion to include. Basically, this is a continuation of the formula. Yep. This, this percentage is going to capital stabilization, so yep. I'll second. Motion made and seconded on Article 5 to include. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Article 6 is uh, the. Uh, hmm. Transfer of money for. Oh, is this because we paid access? last year? This is we have to include it. Wouldn't it be coming from peg access yeah. funds? Well, not we pre -cash. put it in the budget now. 
I think it's in the budget, not in the warrant article. Yeah, we, we I'll should. double check that. Yeah, because yeah, right. we may not need that. We had. I, I remember. I seem to remember last year we had to move from free cash because we didn't fund it that oh, year. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So I can. And it delete. should be automatic right. in the budget this year as a pass through. Right. right. This is like the first year. Of okay. the, Correct. We, we right. did, that was the year of the change. Article right. seven. So we'll, we'll we don't we'll pass over that one. Article seven. Uh, capital budget. Capital this is planning. the capital. Mm -hmm. Our capital budget article. Move to include. Second. We have a motion made. Second to include the capital Excuse budget. Me. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero to see to number eight as this town will create an appropriate transportation and infrastructure fund hmm. from the Commonwealth Transportation and Infrastructure Fund. Is that? Uh, this North is Main the um, big five hundred and twenty. Eight dollars that we received. Um, it's part of the state allocation. Oh, okay. Um, and we'd like to use those funds for um, complete street signs and other mm -hmm. com complete other streets eligible okay. activities. But we have to appropriate it. Dor says so. So you you create you create a fund mm -hmm. to be able to move money into. Yeah. Is is this does this help us with future applications with respect to Dor? I'm sorry, DOT, or is this a one time? No, I think this is going to happen. It's not a lot of money. I mean, some towns got well, paid like I'm, a yeah, yeah I'm very if, minimal. Yeah, I'm wondering if they created a mechanism for future as well. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, move to include. Yep. Second. You move to recommend. Oh, also. Uh, yeah, and move to recommend as well. Yep. Both. A motion to include here. and to recommend oh. article present as article eight presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Article 9 is T is town, oh, the CPA. CPA. Oh, CPA, yes. and this is to appropriate $245,541 from CPA Open Space Reserve and $54,519 from the CPA Undesignated Budgeted yeah. Reserves. And this is going to the Conservation yeah. Commission to purchase a paper uh, to help pay for a piece of property up in North Sunderland. Correct. Uh, move to include and recommend. Oh, second to include and to recommend. We have a motion made and seconded to include and recommend. This is eight, total be $80,000 for a CPA purchase up in North Sunderland. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. I think in, in that discussion, the I'm sure Concom Jennifer talked to the change in the program as well. Yes. How much the town has to, the percentage the town puts up now. Yes, it's like one third now. Correct. Article 10 to see the town will vote to appropriate or reserve from fiscal year 2020 CPA funds. And, and this is the formula right off of the residence. This, is, this yeah. is the formula that yeah. the, they have to use for the CPA, Move where they have to the designate funds. Yep. They designate. So there's no, other than Article 9, there's no draw on CPA required from town meeting. That is correct. Okay. But we do have we do have to put away certain percentages Coming for here. historical reserve, community housing yep. reserve, right. open space reserve, and, and the, uh, but we do have to designate where those things are going. Great. Hey. Uh, move to rec move to include and to recommend Article 10. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded to include Article 10, the CPA. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article 11 uh, is basically is uh, to authorize revolving funds for the wiring inspector, plumbing inspector, board of health, sun on public library, community room, fire inspections, and highway shared equipment. Uh, move to, and we have the recommendation. This is running off this year's uh, fee schedule. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So move to include and to recommend Article 11. Second. A motion made and seconded to include and recommend Article for the uh, revolving funds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article 12. Does town raise and appropriate transfer from the available funds? The money that we need to pay for snow and ice deficit for this past year. Include. Okay, we don't have a we don't have a final we number on that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We have a motion made second and seconded to include. to include this article. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero to include. Article thirteen. 
Um, to fund teacher retirement pay payouts at the Sunland Elementary School. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, this moves the one-time buyouts of two uh, retirees yep. off of the budget, puts it in a warrant article, so yep. that it's not just on the budget and as part of the recurring theme, it is truly a one-time cost. So, you know what the total cost is on this guy? Thirteen thousand, a little total? bit more. Thirteen five forty-two, I think. Okay. And those, motion uh, move to include and to recommend motion made and seconded to include and Second. recommend this is for the uh, fund teacher retirement pay one-time expense all those in favor signify by saying aye aye uh, article 14 see if town will vote to amend chapter 100 section 2 of the code of Sunland sales casual so this is um, a bylaw change. Yes, the chief just Zoning. wants to add the language so that um, he can have a representative or designee if he's not around. Um, Code of Sunderland sales. So what would this police department be selling? I believe it is First for all, the move. tag sales. Okay, so first of all, move to include. All right. Yeah, motion. All yeah. right. Just to include. Just to include. All right. And then, then we can discuss it exactly. later. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Sherry, can we have more, a little bit more information sure. on that? So, we have a motion to include Article 14, which is a change of the, uh, to the bylaws. Second. All, and it's been submitted by the chief. All those in uh, motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Article 15, this is submitted by the planning board and this is a uh, amendment to the zoning bylaws also and it t talks about flex development re major residential development uh, move to include uh, second motion made to include this so numbered fi article 15 all those in favor signify by saying it aye aye, aye. article six that's three zero article 16 have another to it bylaw change by citizens petition and basically it's changing the zoning on a piece of property we're still waiting for the final legal review on this the, the question was about spot zoning versus the we bylaw. did get an opinion okay uh, move to its citizens petition but move right. to include second a motion made and seconded to include article 17 Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Three zero. Eighteen is a citizen's petition as well. Eighteen is a signature position. Um, that would um, proving for the creation of a special commission relative to seal and model of the Commonwealth and request that Representative Natalie Blay and Senator Joe Comerford continue their strong advocacy and support. Both, it's a citizen's petition. All those, uh, motion? So moved. Motion made. Second. And seconded to include Article 18. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We cut Article 18. Article 19 is to see if the town will vote to petition the legislator to change the name of the town of Sunderland Board of Selectmen to the town of Sunderland select board or take any other actions and we determined that that's the required step um can yes we, town um, council will refine the article i put that in as a place holder move to include <laughs> second okay motion made seconded to include all those in favor signify by saying aye aye article 20. um this is these are the easements on north main Yes. These are this easements on North Main Street for the North Main reconstruction. They uh, none, uh, none of these are permanent, though. No. Yeah, and I'm not sure about um, costs, so that's something that we'll need to take a look at too. Is this integral to the DOT moving forward and keeping that project on schedule? No, not at this point. It's just a placeholder. So we're not going to be appropriating. We can appropriate any money. the funds now, or do it at a, you know later so i don't think we have all the but we don't know what the cost is 
uh, for a public way, we have to have easements. We we're do. Not, we're not construction in, uh, easements. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Move, move to include. Second. Motion to include on Article 20 is looking for easements along North Main Street for the reconstruction. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. It's important to bear in mind construction easements. These are not permanent. Nobody's losing any property. Yeah, no. This is This is just we're gonna, to do we're, the work. We might dig up your sidewalk and we're going to put it back. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Three to zero. 21 is to see if the town will authorize us to collector to enter and con these are the consent the articles. Consent ones. Can we do, consent, we do yeah. the block the, right? These are the all uh, consent articles uh, are 21 through 26. Move to include and recommend. Second. Motion made to include and recommend the consent articles, articles 21 through 26. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. That's it. Mr. Hool, did you here. have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. Well, thank you for coming in. <laughs> thank you for coming in, Jay. Okay. Uh, Superintendent's in the back row. I yes. see. Chair yes. Select. Chair 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 I'm guessing Nolan another meeting got out. Justine, huh? did you have anything to add? I'm totally off the record. Not, I don't know if this has to be a, if you have to do an article to propose a, a plastic bag ban. Is that something that would have to be? We will follow up with that. So yeah. A plastic bag ban? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would it come to town meeting with that to it? Um, I think so. I'll yeah. check with the... Or, or would it go to the board? It may, it may just go to the Board of Health. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to Jana ask. Mead. Mead. Uh, we don't have a city Jana council Mead. to do it, uh, so Franklin, we'll ask. Franklin County <laughs> Waste <laughs> District, I'll check I'll with them. Justine, Justine we will check with the uh, with Janamine from the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Mm -hmm. yep. But that may be something that uh, the Board of Health would do. Right. They have, they have, Board of Health are the most powerful. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they, 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 they rule. Shut you down. They will. <laughs> they, they, they At the rule knees. With a golden scepter. I have listened. A golden scepter. Wow. A golden I scepter. Nice. Well, it's not a trident, because that's old not That's all, well, yeah. Old. That's right. All right, so are we all set with this? I think yeah, so. Yeah, the warrant. Yeah, we made good pass on the warrant. Do you want to, just want to talk briefly about what we accomplished tonight? We listened, we listened, we listened. Come on listened down. Listened more. <laughs> so, uh, you mean Jay, you're looking good. Discuss the uh, congratulations also. So, what we did tonight was uh, Sherry has prepared a budget uh, based on the reductions in the town side and uh, it was essentially it was your uh, plan B range. We, we plugged in two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I know that number is not not. I know that number is fluid, yeah. and uh, we realized that going through that process, that the town side increase would be about seventy seven thousand and seventy seven dollars for all goods and services the town provides, and the school would be about two hundred and fifty thousand. I put it that way for a reason, and I say that. That still puts us about $72,000 uh, short or just beyond reach or of a gap to close. Uh, we did not take any action on voting for an override, although there was a fair amount of impassioned um, support of an override. So again, whatever your final number voted or if there is a number that's more than 250 or less than 250, we just put 250 in, please let us know. And that, that moves us forward. We'll be having an override uh, decision we have to notify the town clerk on Monday. Yeah. So we, we took, uh, if I may. Yeah, please. Uh, it's his meeting, but we're a team. <laughs> the vote that we took mm -hmm. put forward two numbers. Okay. One number, if an override had to happen, yep. okay. here's the number we would recommend. Okay. That's smart. But uh, if it were not to go to an override, uh, here's a number that we could live with okay. understanding that there are structural issues with the budget that would have to be addressed perhaps as soon as next year <coughs> correct yep. right but uh in the spirit of trying to like goodwill and, and trying to mm -hmm. get through this year and not have back-to-back -back overrides right. um so you're talking in terms of the delta yeah right well your assessment to the town right yeah. um so the delta that we got to was 264. okay 
So in the neighborhood, of 14K off the 250. Yep. So 264 even or with, with noise? Uh, the, the total number, let's see. Because if, if we're, Monday we need to vote one way or another. If we're going to carry a number to the electorate, we need to have a number to put on a ballot. The budget for the school that would go if we did not have an override, the correct one is the two million eight hundred and sixty one thousand yep. two hundred and eighty eight all in. Yep. That includes transportation. Yes. Yes. Okay. We break it out, that's yep. why I asked. and then and then an override number would be? The override number is the original number that we voted on the previous occasion. It would be the 354. Uh, exactly. The delta is in the 354. Okay. Mm -hmm. This original number? Yeah. 354. And again, I appreciate the, the effort. The fact the meeting was called in relatively short order. We're, we are working to ensure that we have our spreadsheets, our revenues, our expense requests, our revenues. So to do to get to the number that we were discussing tonight, we have two percent increases for uh, staff's non-negotiated salary and effectively no expense increase. So a total for the town of seventy-seven thousand. And and again, that that is a little north of our where we where we'd like to be programmatically, but we understand completely. People are going to be mad. The room will be filled with other angry people, and that's okay. It's the budget season. It just is what it is. No one tonight in the audience wanted to talk about highway or fire or police. It was fine. I found that quite interesting. But, you know, that's okay. All right. So, so basically, uh, we, uh, Mar, I would say over the next two days, we scrub numbers and we will uh, decide on, right? Right. Mon Monday night. Right. So, so you have another meeting Monday night? Yes, we do. We have yeah. to notify the clerk about um, override. Both language and, and let us number. Our duties. If it, if she doesn't have it by end of by midnight on Monday, then you know it won't happen. I applaud the people who are in the in the gallery tonight who said you know that as gate holders as to what gets placed on a on a <laughs> question. You know, letting the voters vote is is primal democracy. They didn't use that term. I do. I, I appreciate that. I genuinely do. I would also, as I did before, uh, remind them that voting is fine. Budgeting is different. <laughs> and you can vote, and if your budget number is zero and it all fails, then we're, you, 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 the elementary school feels an extraordinary amount of pain, more so than what this process is going under right now, which is where is that middle ground for a soft landing? So, again, I love voting. Do it all the time. Voting for the sake of voting? Eh. You gotta be prepared for the outcome. Great. You know? That's what, what do you think? Next year will be easier, huh? Next year will Piece be of easier. Cake next year. <laughs> hey, Doug. Hey there. There's figs on the hood of my truck if you want one. There's what? There's figs? figs on the hood of my truck if you want one. <laughs> they're, they're staying cold right now. Okay. Uh, Scott, you got anything else? Uh, no. David? No. No. I'm, I'm good. Jerry, you got anything you want to add? Good. Any uh, any additions from the uh, audience? Do you have an idea of the number or range? And if, if you're talking an override, do we? A number for the override? Right. If you're going to cover the whole span, if, if, if well, that's, that's a pretty wide-ranging discussion, but if you're going to cover the ask for the elementary school exclusively, you're in the quarter of a million dollar range, and we can afford the rest. Right now, right now, with with a reduction, I'm sure you made expense reductions to get to your your, your 264, right? And, so, and also move some. And uh, and move some. Budget uh, was less yep. choice. We yep. were trying to get away from. Yep. Right, because that was the whole exercise. Yep. <laughs> we did include and recommend the <coughs> retirement uh, salary. So yes. retirement warrant article is on the warrant. Yeah, we put that. Um, so if, if that's if that's a 264, we'll plug that number in. Right now we're at 71. We're gonna add another 14. See what we have for available revenues. As we talked about, in particular, the one uh, piece of local receipt. We try not to do the Icarus model. We use a three-year model, three-year trend. It kind of keeps us out of trouble, so we don't have a shortfall when 
yep. economy hits the skids and nobody buys cars, you know, and you go, oh, we counted on that. Well, you don't do that. Um, but that's our homework between now and Monday. To Justine's question, it's not to take the entirety of the override, but the bulk of it, it would be it would be the entirety of the override and essentially be targeted to fund the elementary school increase. That would be on the tax rate moving forward. And that's part of the goal, which we think is laudable. I personally think is laudable to move those recurring expenses to a recurring stream. And then you spin the wheel of override. <laughs> Just cringing and shaking your head. Been there. It's okay. It's a great story. Well, I, I, I would think, I, I would say that if, if the decision is to, that we need to vote for an override, I think we have to review our entire budget. Mm -hmm. um, because there may be other pent up frustrations that. Mm -hmm. Great point. And, and yes. And, and I, I don't know if I would uh, Great point. want to go with solely a school override. I, I right. mean, but remove and, and I, I, I think we've said over the a long time, One if time. we go back to 2009, mm -hmm. is that we are in this as a town, not as, it's not school versus anything. Exactly right. so. And, and, and I don't, mm. and I don't want to pit our, I don't want to pit our staff against, I, and, and I don't want to pit our staff, so I, I'd want to go back and look at the entire budget also. So the process, you want to end up with nobody in a pedestal, no one in a casket. Right. <laughs> Good way to put it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. I didn't realize that.